Hey guys, and welcome back to Working Aussie's Homestead. I'm Jordan, and today we are going to show you our very first garden tour video of 2022. We have our garden here split into two halves. So we have one half that's already jamming, planted, all the fun stuff and we have this other half behind me that we are getting ready to prepare to plant in so if you are new here we are doing a mixture of a whole bunch of things on our 1.24 acres and our garden here is roughly 3,500 square feet where we grow lots of food we have our garden primarily set up as a market garden style where we have 30 inch beds and 18 inch walkways and what that allows us to do is make the most out of our small space so I'm gonna start with uh, this end row for you guys We'll talk about the greenhouse in a moment. But we have 12 rows, 12 beds in this section of the garden that we have planted. And then another 12 in the other half that we are prepping. This part of the garden has been jamming and growing for a lot longer than the other part. And I'll explain why. So in this first row, we have our onions planted. We have 98 heads, bulbs, of onions and then we have our lettuce started so our lettuce has actually done really really well this year we did a few different varieties and it has just loved it so we've got some that are purple and green and then we have our merlot lettuce now all of these were actually from a free seed packet we got from baker creek this is called merlot lettuce and it's a leaf lettuce rather than a head lettuce so instead of forming a head that we would cut off once and have all of that lettuce, this is actually, you're able to pick it off leaf by leaf and then it just continues to grow. Um, so these we've actually harvested off of already once or twice, I believe, but it's great. It's got a very different flavor. It does have a flavor. It's not flavorless lettuce. Um, believe it or not, if you have never grown your own lettuce, lettuce has flavor that stuff you get from the grocery store has no flavor that's why you need all of the dressings and all of the seasonings to add to it homegrown lettuce all the flavor you don't need anything josh actually loves to just do a little bit of salt pepper and olive oil that's his favorite dressing for lettuce We've got all of these heads in here. We're quite excited. This weekend is actually our very first farmer's market. And so we're excited to take a bunch of this lettuce. I've already tried to put the word out a little bit to get more people involved and excited about having some fresh organic lettuce. So let's continue on. So we've gone over our first row. We're headed on to the second. In the meantime, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about this very sad looking greenhouse. So we had a massive storm come through here about a week ago and it's a good thing we were home because we got to watch all of the panels just fly off the greenhouse. So today we actually went and picked up some silicone to help put it back together, glue it back together. We'll see if it helps. But I wanted to just share that with you so you're not like, oh, what happened to your greenhouse? It's, uh, it's a sad mess right now. It's okay. We'll figure it out. We've got these beautiful spinaches here. And it is delicious, nice, and crisp. We've got some little ones growing. We have a couple kales in here that have obviously been attacked by our lovely cabbage moths. So they're trying. They're trying. So, but we just got these spinaches transplanted not too long ago. This is Josh's favorite row right here. And I'll tell you why. We have tried to grow carrots for the last three years. Lots and lots of carrots. Like, not last year, but the summer before, we seriously planted two entire rows of carrot seeds and not a single one sprouted. And we kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. 
finally we have success this is an entire 35 foot row of carrots and we're super excited about it so we have this whole row of carrots and then I have some plants in here that are not doing well we're actually gonna end up pulling up most of them we had planted some cabbages in here but we're pretty sure they were a little bit stunted so they haven't grown much I have a couple rogue potatoes that's the favorite thing is we have rogue potatoes in this garden but some rogue potatoes one right there and this big one here and again our cabbage has obviously seen the lovely cabbage worm cabbage moth damage so again ones that haven't quite grown in here but you know what you can't fail if you don't try so uh, then we also have a couple kales planted in here now this is a nice curly kale it looks like it's trying to grow we'll see if it will uh, this actually looks like a watermelon I'm not sure why it's planted here um, and then we have some major major weeding to do but if you guys follow us on social media at all you know it's been a busy season already and we have this entire row of potatoes that I actually planted back in April when Josh was gone for three weeks uh, he was out of town he was out in Kansas for three weeks so I planted this entire row of potatoes and they all came up which is lovely on to the next row we've got some broccolis I'm excited Josh is excited not all of them have done well but there are some big ones in here so we have our fingers crossed for some broccolis but again some lovely cabbage moth damage there so if you're new to gardening and you are also struggling with some cabbage moths it's some pretty white butterflies that are laying eggs and then they turn into these bright green caterpillars that eat up all of your vegetables you can actually plant some marigolds around them and that should help deter them our issue here was we did not leave our agrabon cover on long enough to also double as a pest netting um, and so we did have some get in and we also don't have marigolds planted but if we really wanted to that's something that we could do to companion plant with and keep the moths away so if you're out there there's a nice tip for you plant some marigolds around your brassicas and then josh just transplanted these beautiful tomatoes they're looking a little sad hopefully they perk on up but we do have our peas growing out here. Unfortunately, after two rounds of snow, they all died. But we do have this nice little pea patch in here. And so instead, we are actually letting all of these go to seed and we're gonna let them dry out and seed save. So we are not eating any of these peas on here. We are just growing them for seeds. So we have some arrow peas here. These are the pretty white flower peas. And then uh, let's see there's a flower this pretty purple flower right here is actually our spring blush so if you've followed any of our other videos our spring blush is actually our favorite variety of pea to grow and it's one that we got from a Baker Creek and it's a beautiful heirloom variety the pods are a little bit purple on the outside um, but the peas are so sweet and they're really good so hopefully we get some good seeds from these peas and uh, then we can have more to plant next year moving on to our next row we have some more lettuces so these were planted later so that we could have some succession planting and then we do have some more potatoes down at the end of this row so we've got some more potatoes some more potatoes that we've already mounted up and then something that we are trying again this year and also trying new is we have some peppers but not just bell peppers we also have some spicy peppers in there like we have some jalapenos cayenne we're not very big on peppers people so 
jalapenos and cayenne is pretty outside of our box as well as some green and yellow bell peppers so we'll have those to make like fajitas with and just eat as a nice summer snack in this next row, we are trying a new variety. These are called dragon tongue beans, and they're these really pretty purple and white bush beans. And so we're excited to try these varieties. We also have some provider beans that we love. We love that, and they've done really well for us here. So we're excited to have some more green beans this summer. This next row is another exciting row. We have three rows left, guys. Three rows left. So we have some popping corn. Uh, I think there's just like 10 in here. Some poppy corn, and then this beautiful baby here, and in all of its friends, are okra. So we have some spineless okra in here. Excited to get some more okra this year. And then we have our lovely summer squash and zucchini started. So we have these planted in here. These will be big and beautiful. And the row beside it that we have empty still up to where those bush beans are, we're actually going to plant in more of the summer squash and zucchini. So it should be absolutely beautiful. And in our final two rows here, we have our beautiful corn that we can hardly wait to harvest here. So we picked a new variety this year as well for corn. We did two different varieties. The first one is called Fishers and it's actually from Baker Creek and it's a early corn. So we're hoping to harvest it before midsummer comes around. But there you have it guys, there is our first garden tour of the season. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. We're excited to share with you the rest of our garden as it progresses and grows this season. Go give us a subscribe. If you're not already, hit that bell button to get those notifications for every time we put out a video and go down and leave it a like for us. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.